all of these cellular diseases have been blamed on either theoretical contagious viruses or theoretical pathogenic bacteria, despite the fact that none of them have ever been proven to be contagious or cause any such cellular diseases, ever. Yet these red bump diseases are very real, most of us are needlessly vaccinated against them, and Big Pharma scams billions of parents each year, selling us drugs that lessen the uncomfortableness of the symptoms, but do zero to address the actual cause of these diseases. So what is causing them, and what can you do about it? As with everything, depending on how far your consciousness and attention is either zoomed out or zoomed in, there are many different ways to describe the exact same illness, but using different lexicons and perspectives. In the end, they are all describing the exact same thing, just in different ways, starting at different points in the fractal. Reality is fractal, and dis-ease within that reality is no different. Various biological sciences are arguing over where this circle starts and where it ends because they don't understand that it doesn't. It's a closed circuit with no beginning or no end. <laughs> we are told healing is voltage by people like Dr. Jerry Tennant, also acupuncturists, and even Far East Taoist Chi healers who tell us that disease is an electrical imbalance in the body and healing is restoring natural electrical potential. That is true. I bet your allopathic doctor isn't trained to do that. Coherent structured water scientists like Dr. Emoto will tell us that dis-ease can be from incoherent, non-natural cymatic water structures within our own body which is itself made up of 90% intelligent water, caused by both external and internal frequencies and mental thought problems, negatively acting upon and destroying the healthy crystalline form of the water that makes up 90% of your body through cymatics, which should be spelled psychmatics, as in psychological restructuring of natural, physical, biological water through thought. And this is also true. German New Medicine will tell you that these diseases are from psychological conflict issues, provoked by unexpected trauma, caused by a shock event, and that the physical dis-ease expressions are the body going into the healing crisis phase to resolve this conflict-based trauma. And that is also true, at least sometimes. As Dr. Stefan Lanka explains, in Dr. Hamer's German New Medicine, he shows where each trauma or biological conflict will affect tissue changes, how it builds up to be able to cope in a given situation, to improve digestion, or is broken down, as in the bones, to improve mobility. He calls them meaningful biological special programs. So, then when I look at his table and all the biological conflicts, a trauma is now turned into a positive thing, into a function that the skin has when we need it for defense or to hold tight, the function organs have, or the tissues that we can't see. I can look up their function and there is a construction plan of the human being. Dr. Hamer found it. Namely, the proof that every part of the body is a materialized unit of consciousness with its own function. We see evidence for this in how a word can cause not only cardiac arrest, but also affect the skin. You can see it. It can affect my self-worth, which leads to bone decomposition. Dr. Hamer has proven that we materialize consciousness. He brought the spirit back into science and put it on a scientific foundation because when someone has a symptom, I can tell you where you'll see a signal in the brain, or if I look at the brain, I can tell what's going on in the body. 
Here, the digestion or ectoderm like a bowl or a symbol for the upside down omega. Simple. When lightning strikes, then more digestion helps me. When the sun shines again, trauma solved, reversed. It works the same with the pericardium heart sac, the skin, etc. These are life principles that fit with everything living. Here, gold, full reduction force, digestion, is right in life's energy flow. Little pain in the healing phase, little fever. Here, a bit more pain further from the energy flow. Here, even further away, bone, tendon, muscles, they dissolve in a trauma. You are worth nothing. Unexpected bad news letter. You are fired. You are worthless or bullied and you can't stand it. The hip ulcerates and then builds up again in the healing phase. The same principles apply for contact. All the sensory organs, the outer skin, the lining of the vessels checking you have enough oxygen, energy, heat, etc. And when the lightning strikes here, then the tissue breaks down to a thinner skin. And when I have contact again, like a child enrolls in school and feels ripped away from its mother, father, and siblings, and the skin is too thin, so straight away it builds it up again, and that is what we call measles. No SIBO and epigenetic scientists will tell you that what you are thinking is translated into physical body chemistry that will determine what you become, as the mystics have always taught and that thoughts, whether they are right or wrong, are changing your cellular biology via sending them signals of threat by releasing chemicals into the blood to prepare those cells for a protectionary response, and that this signal can cause more than 90% of diseases. This is also true. Then we have various environmental, pharmaceutical, and vaccination poisoning events that can require extreme emergency detoxes through the skin. As Kate Sugak explains in her incredible film, The Truth About Smallpox. And is classified as toxic epidermal acrolysis. It is caused by toxic pharmaceuticals and other toxic substances. Just like smallpox, Toxic epidermal acrolysis begins with fever and flu-like symptoms, and the mortality rate is usually as high as 30 to 70 percent. Thus, if we understand that the smallpox virus does not exist, it becomes obvious that flat-type smallpox is nothing more than a consequence of severe intoxication, that is, poisoning. In this connection, we cease to wonder why in the pictures depicting flat-type smallpox we see such symptoms mainly in people from former colonial countries, such as India, Pakistan and African countries. Poverty, chronic malnutrition, exhaustion, psychological stress, water and food contamination, toxic drugs, the medical experiments to which they have been subjected, and other toxicological factors which are often present in these countries can lead to such consequences in large groups of people. And the legend of the virus and contagion is used as a cover for all these crimes and negligence. The same applies to the first two types of rashes, now called chickenpox and monkeypox. Chickenpox and monkeypox viruses have never been isolated, neither has the smallpox virus. In fact, they don't exist. This is why you can never eradicate smallpox, but only mask the same symptoms under a new label. Skin rashes are never the result of exposure to a mythical virus. They are the consequence of a detoxification mechanism that involves the skin. What happens is that waste products are thrown into our interstitial fluid, which enter the blood plasma due to hydrostatic pressure. This happens due to the accumulation of nutritional and metabolic acidic wastes, as well as various toxic substances. If these wastes and toxins have not been properly eliminated by our lymphatic system and the four main channels of excretion, urination, defecation, sweating, and breathing, our body removes these wastes through the skin tissue. This begins a process in which the skin fibers become tangled and bulging, creating congestion and swelling in the glands and lymph vessels, and then the waste begins to be expelled through the skin. The nature of the rash depends on what the body is trying to get out. 
For example, if you open a medical reference book on toxicology and look at the skin symptoms that occur with intoxication caused by various substances, it will become obvious to you how much our skin is involved in the detoxification process of these substances, and you can see the different nature of the rashes when exposed to different toxins. The tendency for children to exhibit skin rashes comes from the fact that the bone growth process is a rather complex mechanism that naturally produces a lot of metabolic waste in children. In addition to this, during bone growth, skin tissue does not keep up with bone tissue, so it is quite typical for children to have low levels of collagen in their skin. Because of this, it is easier and preferable for the body to eliminate these wastes through the skin, and as a consequence, we will see a strong tendency for children to exhibit skin rashes as they grow up. If, in addition to metabolic waste, the child's body has to deal with waste products and toxins from an improper diet, lifestyle, such as not spending enough time in sunlight and producing little vitamin D, a bad ecological environment, or psychological stress, and if the rest of the child's excretory organs are weakened, these symptoms will be more severe. The fact that these symptoms often occur in some children in the same family or group at the same time is because these particular children not only share the same growth process, but also many other physical and psychosomatic factors that give toxic strain to the body, and since humans are social creatures, they tend to go through such processes in sync. But those children who don't have to deal with such a toxic load and emotional stress, who spend a lot of time outdoors, eat differently and so on, will be able to cope with the removal of waste from the body without any noticeable symptoms. So no matter how much contact they have with children with chicken pox, they will not get it. If we look back to the 1700s, when skin rashes were very common in Europe, which motivated Edward Jenner to create a smallpox vaccine, which of course was absolutely useless. We see that people in that time faced not only grueling wars but also natural disasters such as floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions which delayed sunlight for months at a time. All this led to mass starvation and deficiencies of vitamin D, iron, and potassium, which are essential for optimal skin function. Combined with increased intoxication and psychological stress, it is not surprising that, at the time, the manifestation of severe skin symptoms, especially in children, was quite common. The medical establishment sells us the unscientific and never proven idea of the immune system that constantly fights the invisible terrorists that want to attack us in the form of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. We don't have an immune system. We have a cleansing and regenerative system. Our body is in a constant process of cleansing and repairing our tissues. This is one of the main biological programs we have, and bacteria and fungi are directly involved in this process, helping us to cleanse and repair our tissues. Public health will only improve as the quality of life improves. Your health is directly related to your quality of life. The fact that we continue to believe in the existence of viruses and in contagion does not allow us to look at the situation adequately and analyze why we actually exhibit certain symptoms. We don't know how to recognize the factors, both physical and psychological, that affect us negatively, so we can't eliminate them. We spend billions of dollars on mass vaccination programs, only to have those same symptoms then relabeled under a different label because the real cause of those symptoms has never been eliminated. To understand what caused any symptoms, whether it is just one person or a large group of people, we have to analyze what toxicological and psychosomatic factors were affecting people before the symptoms began. The more time you spend in daylight, the cleaner your diet is, the more fruits and vegetables you eat, and the fewer medications you take, the less your excretory organs will be overloaded. If you follow circadian rhythms, eat correctly, and lead as healthy a lifestyle as possible, you will notice that you get sick much less often, and you don't get sick when other people around you get sick. It is important to pay close attention to your emotional state. I highly recommend to have a look to the new German medicine materials if you want to learn to recognize the psychosomatic factors that affect your health. They all understand and are talking about the exact same thing, but are trying to claim they each found the unique beginning and end of an infinite connected circle. What circle? This one. 
a very ancient occulted biological science that predates all of them by thousands of years. You may know it as this, the Zodiac, the inside of your human body mapped out in all its glory across the magnificent starry night sky in the northern hemisphere. This is not meant to insert just another perceived beginning and end point of an infinite circle, but rather to offer esoteric biochemistry as a possible unifying factor for all of these new sciences to describe the biological phenomenon of the entire circle itself. In any electrical system, you need a closed path or closed circuit to get an electric current to flow. If there is a break anywhere in the path, you have an open circuit and the current stops flowing. We are electrical beings and our bodies have multiple closed circuits and even some interconnected circuits. When there are problems with either electrochemical impulse imbalances, fuel to the power source, or even the power source itself, or deficiencies in the mineral-based body parts or hardware that make up these circuits, we can call this dis-ease. When there is a break in the circuits or the power source is cut off, we can call this death. If the warfare model known as the germ theory of dis-ease was correct and nature was out to destroy all life with pathogenic microbes, as cartoon science loves to tell us, it seems absurd that there are 1.3 million identified species on this earth and an estimated 8.7 million more we don't know about yet. Clearly, nature is designed to thrive, not destroy itself with ever multiplying and uncontrollable pathogenic microbes. What is interesting about esoteric biochemistry is that it doesn't really care if you believe in germ theory or terrain philosophy or any of the other theories for that matter. It eliminates the need to both fight over it or pharmaceutically medicate against it. In fact, though most of the adepts and biochemists knew better, as Dr. Perry said about Dr. Carey, he was not at all interested in the germ theory as a cause of disease deficient material for nature to work with and a general toxic condition constitutes the reason for physical and mental dis-ease and inharmony. But some of the early biochemists did believe in germ theory, as we see in this statement in 1893. Smallpox may be catching, but there must first be a deficiency in the blood of certain mineral salts of the one who catches it. However, they do admit that the real pathology of both smallpox and measles is the same, meaning they both have the exact same anatomic and functional manifestations, meaning smallpox and measles are the exact same disease with two different names, as is varicella or chickenpox, a third name for the exact same disease, as we will show you. According to cartoon science, if you draw the exact same amount of dots on two cartoon people in all of the exact same places on their bodies, but draw more dots on the head, hands, legs, and feet on one of the cartoons, and then draw more dots on the chest and torso of the other cartoon, you can now tell chicken pox from smallpox, even though they look identical side by side meaning they have the same pathology because they are the same disease expressing in different places in the body. We learned from Dr. Alfred F. Hess of New York in his letter to the journal on October 1919 entitled Need of Further Research on the Transmissibility of Measles and Chickenpox where Dr. Hess stated I have just read the abstract in the journal of Dr. Sellards of John Hopkins' article on the insusceptibility of man to inoculation with blood from measles patients, 
it is remarkable that Dr. Sellards was unable to produce this highly infectious disease by means of the blood or the nasal secretion of so-called infected individuals. Not long ago, however, I had a similar experience with varicella or chickenpox. Thus, we are confronted with two diseases, the two most infectious diseases of the endemic diseases in this part of the world, which we are unable to transmit artificially from man to man. And this is exactly what happens when doctors are taught the germ theory. It's like a soccer mom trying to figure out why the car engine won't turn over, even though there's a full tank of gas in it, to use a sexist example. How dare you! Biochemistry is not so overly concerned with what external or internal factors are causing the cellular fluid or tissue dis-ease, but rather with what is actually happening inside of the body because of them. And unlike Big Pharma, which profits trillions of dollars by keeping people sick on synthetic drugs that only suppress the body from healing or stop us from feeling symptoms, but do nothing to permanently prevent or cure the disease itself, biochemistry is concerned with you giving your body the minerals, air, structured water, and electricity it needs to electrochemically heal itself normally and comfortably without your body having to resort to more extreme emergency detox measures, which can be painful and sometimes damage the body in the healing process. Physician, Physician heal, heal thyself. thyself. Jesus was correct, but you cannot heal thyself unless you comprehend what is wrong with thyself. And this is why Big Pharma cannot heal anybody. They are the real quacks who operate under false materialistic pseudoscience. Ancient alchemy is not a bunch of guys literally trying to find the philosopher's stone so that they can turn base metals like mercury into gold. It is a metaphor for what happens inside a living being when dead inorganic mineral salts are combined together with protoplasm and become living organic material. Cell salts deficiency. <clears throat> cell salts we make a big, big thing out of because they are preparations of the 12 resonant fields that come down from the constellations above us. There is a grand design to our realm. Our realm has um, resonant fields that are actually beamed down on us. They include the sun, the moon, uh, the constellations. Uh, when we talk about astrology, we're not going into horoscope reading. Uh, you know, what we are doing is entertaining it as a very real science. If you go into cymatics, as we've already mentioned uh, today, cymatics is simply like what the Native Americans would do. They would, um, you know, uh, stretch a buckskin, put some sand on it, and they would play some music and watch ge geometrical forms, uh, you know, coalesce on the buckskin, the Tibetans did the same thing. They understood that those resonances that they could isolate would always, every time, create a specific geometry. So uh, these 12 constellations we'll talk about are the ones that create the 12 component spectrum that creates all of life in our realm. And our biological temples are nothing more than a step down of that. And these 12 cell salts are like the little elements or inorganic elements or combinations of things um, like potassium sulfate and so forth, uh, you know, that then are able to be capacitors for those larger residents that are beamed down and not from solid planets, but from plasma fields, much different than what we're taught by NASA with their CGI pictures. But then these resonance, then uh, we incorporate into our body, but we can only do that if these 12 cell salts are available in abundance in the bloodstream at all times. So these um, 12 salts will then, working in unison, uh, create all of the form and function through resonant 
based geometry within our physical system. If they are missing, then you will have symptoms. Mm -hmm. And all disease is caused by a lack. So the inorganic elements provide the resident induced geometry to create the unique characteristics of every bodily tissue, period. If any of the 12 soul salts, cell salts are deficient within the blood, both structure and function will be compromised. Deficiencies alert with typical unpleasant sensory feedback as an opportunity for early onset correction. Any diagnosis of disease can only obfuscate what would otherwise be obvious while further complicating physiology with the escalation of mental emotional trauma. The great occultist and esoteric biochemist Dr. George Washington Carey tells us, all the blood in the body passes through the heart, the great alchemical vase, the son of heaven, and that air is the raw material for blood and when it is drawn in or breathed in rather by the infinite alchemist you to the blood vessels it unites with the philosopher's stone or rather stones it unites with the 12 mineral salts of the body and in the human laboratory this creates blood like much of the Bible the zodiac is an allegory for your physical body drawn out in the northern star constellations and ancient astrology and tarot are occulted physical biological sciences hidden from the general public by religious control institutions don't you blaspheme in here don't you blaspheme in here based on as above in the stars so below in our bodies when you see the constellation Leo the lion it is blatantly obvious that that looks nothing like a lion that is because the constellation Leo is a man-made allegory not only for the Sun at its highest power in mid-July to mid-August as it visually rises in the morning over the night constellation Leo but also as an allegory for the mineral magnesium phosphate that makes up our heart, our motor nerves, and the surrounding tissues near the heart. As Dr. Berlando explained, the ancients well understood that the resonant cymatic frequencies in the plasma fields from that part of the sky they named Leo, along with the sun, moon, and wandering stars, or so-called planets, transiting that area, cause the inorganic mineral magnesium phosphate in our bodies to vibrate through resonance and creates the geometric forms or tissues of our heart, motor nerves, and back and side near our heart. A good metaphor is that the electromagnetic plasma energies of the heavens above vibrate the inorganic minerals below in the body, which creates the potential geometric form possibilities or chicken wire frames on which the organic matter those minerals attract build the physical form over like paper mache religious people call this cymatic phenomenon the word of God God speaks and God creates form out of seemingly thin air the various religious control institutions throughout the centuries have ingeniously disguised the astrological science of right angles in the heavens above and thus in the human body below as fictional angels in the heavens, not angles. So the profane muggles never catch on to the true meanings of the esoteric mystery school teachings and never become ungovernable self-masters. People who look to external saviors will never save themselves. Don't you blaspheme in here! Don't you blaspheme in here! The angles or angels of the 12 zodiacal signs in the heaven materialize their vitalities in the human microcosm. Through the operation of chemistry or energy creating, the intelligent so-called molecules of the divine substance of minerals, air, water, and thought electricity make the spiritual world physical flesh. 
Air is the raw material for blood, and when it is drawn in, or breathed in rather, by the infinite alchemists to the blood vessels, it unites with the philosopher's stone, the mineral salts, and in the human laboratory it creates blood. Blood is the elixir of life, the ichor of the gods. In ancient lore, Ares was known as the Lamb of God, or Gad, which represents the head or brain, more specifically, the top cerebrum. The word God, or Gad, comes from the Aramaic word Gaja, the goat, which is the real reason the Baphomet of Satanism has a goat head, and we'll get into what Satan really is in Bible alchemical lore later. Don't you blaspheme in here! Don't you blaspheme in here! It is obvious to see why the ram was chosen by the ancients to symbolize the power of the upper part of our cerebrum, and it is equally as obvious why the astrological glyph representing the cerebrum and its symbolic constellation Aries looks identical to ram horns. The brain controls and directs the body and mind of man. The brain itself, however, is a receiver operated on by so-called celestial influences or angles, angels, and must operate according to the directing force or intelligence of its source power, no different than your car radio picking up radio stations. Man has been deficient in understanding because his brain receiver did not vibrate to certain subtle influences. The dynamic cells in the gray matter of the nerves were not finely attuned and did not respond, hence sin, meaning falling short of understanding. From the teachings of the chemistry of life, we find that the basis of the brain or nerve fluid is a certain mineral salt known as potassium phosphate or caliphos. A deficiency in this brain constituent means sin or a falling short of judgment or proper comprehension. Practitioners of German New Medicine might want to ask why it is that 10 children can experience the exact same traumatic event, like a separation from their parents and family when starting school, yet only some of them experience an actual mental and emotional trauma and then go into a conflict and then a healing crisis like the chicken pox, which we'll explain shortly. Yet the other children who experience the same exact event aren't traumatized by it. Can this be explained by a mineral deficiency in the brains of the children, like potassium phosphate, stopping them from having proper judgment or comprehension that they are going to be okay? One example of this can be seen in the zodiacal sign Cancer, which symbolizes, among other things, the elastic tissues of the body, like the connective tissue of the skin, and in esoteric biochemistry, along with the moon, vibrationally synthesizes the mineral fluoride of lime, or calcium fluoride, in the body. The cornerstone in the chemistry of cancer the crab is the inorganic salt fluoride of lime. It is a combination of fluorine and lime. When this mineral salt is deficient in our blood, both physical and mental dis-ease is the result. Elastic fiber is formed by the union of calcium fluoride with albuminoids, simple proteins like keratin, elastin, and collagen, whether in a rubber tree or in the human body. All relaxed conditions of tissue are due to a lack of sufficient amount of elastic fiber to rubber the tissue and hold it in place. So how does this also affect mental dis-ease? When elastic mineral fiber is deficient in tissue of membrane between the upper cerebrum and lower cerebellum brain poles, there results a sagging apart of the positive and negative poles of the dynamo that runs the machinery of man's body. Calcium fluoride is used as a component of electrolyte fluxing agent for metallurgy. Take the electrolyte separator out of your anode and cathode battery and see how that works for you. An unfailing sign or symptom of just this one mineral deficiency is a groundless fear of financial ruin, basically a fear of loss or separation, 
which is interesting when we look at rashes, chickenpox, measles, rubella, and shingles as viewed through German New Medicine. Keep in mind that in German New Medicine, the symptoms, the skin rashes, occur when the trauma or conflict has been resolved and the body is healing from that conflict, not an immediate result of the conflict or trauma happening. And they agree that these diseases are not from imaginary viruses, as contagious viruses do not exist. So giving your child autism or Ghoulain-Barr syndrome to prevent a normal spell of loneliness later in life is insanity, but that's none of my business. Rashes on the outer skin layers or epidermis are usually from separation conflicts. Either you've been separated from someone or you want to separate from or get rid of someone. In measles, rubella, and chickenpox, these skin rashes cover most of the body. This means that the separation conflict is more generalized, which happens when you feel separated as a whole. These full body rashes are very rare among adults, but typically experienced by infants and children, as they are much more sensitive to separation from the pack, as in families at home or friends at school. Usually, these separation conflicts among children happen when they get sent to daycare or to school, as they are separated from their safe home, from their parents and perhaps siblings, as the children get accustomed to daycare, kindergarten or school, and if they come home to a loving family who make them feel safe again, the conflict gets resolved and the healing begins, hence the rashes. This is why measles typically occurs in the fall, right when children either start or go back to school and get separated from their family again. Other children that really dislike school and do not get accustomed to it or children that come home to an empty house and hardly meet their family during school days might not resolve their conflict until the winter holidays or even Christmas and that is why chickenpox usually occurs during the winter. Obviously germs and microbes don't take precisely scheduled nine-month vacations so the fact that there are yearly chickenpox and measles seasons should tell you you believe in nonsense but that's none of my business either. Also, not being allowed or not wanting to have contact with someone who has the infection or disease also results in a separation conflict, which can trigger the illusion of a virus outbreak, such as measles. For example, as soon as your friend has got better and you can see him or her again, your conflict has been resolved and instead you get the symptoms of healing as in the measles giving the illusion of a contagion another reason why certain people are either causing or suffering mental and emotional conflicts and traumas that needn't be can be found in a mineral deficiency of sodium phosphate aka natrium phosphate which regulates the bladder the kidneys and most importantly is the body's acid neutralizer. Natrium phosphate corresponds with the constellation Libra, the scales, or balance, balance of the body's acid and alkaline pH levels. Libra is a Latin word meaning scales or balance. Sodium or natrium phosphate holds the balance between acids and the normal fluids of the human body. Acid is organic and it can be chemically split into two or more elements by natrium phosphate, thus destroying the formula that makes the chemical rate of motion called acid. A certain amount of acid is always present in the blood, the nerves, stomach, and liver fluids, but the apparent excess of acid is always due to a deficiency in the alkaline Libra salt, natrium phosphate. We already know this exoterically, because natrium phosphate is given to people to relieve acid buildup problems like relief of indigestion, gas and joint pains, heartburn, flatulence, burping, headaches during thunderstorms, easy hot flushing or redness of the face, yellow coating of the tongue or throat, sourness and acidity, asthma that worsens in the evening, 
stiffness after moderate exertion or exercise, and short and stiff hamstrings or tendencies to contraction of tendons. But there is also a mental and emotional non-physical effect from too much acid destroying the brain and nervous system that people deficient in natrium phosphate suffer. These people become oversensitive and refined. They withdraw too easily when hurt. They have a nervous weakness. They are reserved and even irritated by well-meaning suggestions. They suffer conflicts and traumas easily that needn't be suffered at all. Before we move on, we need a crash course in esoteric biochemistry, Bible alchemy, Bible chemistry, and New Testament symbolism. Warning. The following segment contains blasphemy and will trigger Jews and Christians. Don't you blaspheme in here! Don't you blaspheme in here! We, I will, I will kill, kill you! you. Boy, hey. Both the Old and New Testaments are ancient astrophysio-alchemical books describing what happens inside the human body. And long before there were hieroglyphics, cuneiform, or writing, the ancients wrote it in oral stories and mythologies in the ever-fixed stars above every night. Of course, we've all been too deliberately distracted, dumbed down, and lied to about history to even comprehend how on earth ancient civilizations could have even possibly known about the internal biochemistry of our body, but that doesn't change the overwhelming esoteric evidence that they did. In Bible alchemy, yes, that is a thing, the constellation Libra represents Reuben, the allegorical first son, or the son of Jacob. Reuben was not a name, it was a word, meaning vision of the sun, that later became a Jewish name, and even a delicious sandwich. Modern-day Israel, with all of their financial and military might, along with their ally and greatest military power in the world, the United States, has been trying for over 60 years to achieve the Greater Israel Project, to take back this massive piece of land, which they claim is theirs, based on an allegory in the Old Testament about the 12 tribes of Israel, and still haven't succeeded. Yet they believe this man Jacob had 12, actually 13 sons, who wearing only sandals and robes, somehow took over and controlled all of this exact same massive area of land in just one adult lifetime, never mind the world's greatest armies and unlimited funds behind them. This is obviously ridiculous, and the real Greater Israel Project, as you will see, is to chemically perfect your own body and thus your thought receiver to resonate with the divine so that you would never attack any people unprovoked for any reason. These are not God's chosen people. The divine does not choose people. People must choose to be divine. They must be balanced in both mind and body. And these are the 12 tribes of Israel the twelve sons, or sons of Jacob. Allegories for what is happening alchemically inside the body in the minor arcana and in its ancient metaphorical story mapped out in the stars in the major arcana, as above, so below. And these people and the trash they're peddling in the New Testament is no better or less misunderstood than the Jews. Many skeptics of Christianity rightly point out the question, what are people with Western English names like Andrew, James, John, Philip, Matthew, Thomas, and later Peter the Apostle doing in the Middle East 2,000 years ago? It's a good question, as it makes no sense, and the Christians, priests, and popes just shrug and can't give them an answer. It's because they too are just New Testament allegories for the exact same science, not historical people. In the symbolism of the New Testament, Libra corresponds to the disciple Peter. Peter is a word derived from Petra, meaning a stone or mineral. 
not a white dude hanging out in the Middle East 2,000 years ago. Matthew 16:18 says, On thee, Peter, mineral, I will build my church, meaning Beth, house, my body or temple, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Obviously, Jesus wouldn't literally build a church on a guy named Peter. And why the reference to the gates of Hades, hell, or what we associate with Satan? What is this church, Beth, house, body, or temple built on minerals? It is us, our body. Acid, in alchemical lore, yes, that is a thing, is represented as Satan, or Saturn, while the mineral, sodium phosphate, symbolizes the Christ principle, or Neptune. An absence of the Christ principle gives license to Satan, acid, to run riot in the holy temple, your body. The advent of Christ drives the evil out with a whip of thongs. Allegory. 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 Reference to the temple in the figurative language of the Bible and New Testament always symbolizes the human organism. Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the living God? Solomon's temple is an allegory of the physical body of man and woman, soul of man's temple, the house, church, beth, or temple made without sound of saw or hammer. Third degree free morons, sorry, Freemasons, are taught the legend of their god, Hiram Abiff, the master stone builder who built Solomon's temple. Stone is a metaphor for mineral. According to Free Moronry, Abif is simply a Hebrew expression for father, a term of respect. So what is Hiram Abif? It's an allegory for Ares, Hiram, the High Ram, or Lamb of Gad, or Lamb of God in your head, who takes away your sins symbolizing your cerebrum, your spinal cord and sensory nerves, the abif, or respected father who art in heaven, who sits right there between your two temples, the master mineral builder who built your body, the temple of Solomon, or the soul of man. Hate, envy, criticism, jealousy, competition, selfishness, war, suicide, and murder are largely caused by acid conditions of the blood, acid, or Satan's alchemical transformation of man, symbolized by the black cube, or Saturn, Saturnism, Satanism, acidity in the blood, producing changes by chemical poisons and irritation of the brain cells, the keys upon which the soul plays divine harmonies, or plays fantastic tricks before high heaven, according to the arrangement of the chemical molecules in the wondrous laboratory of the soul. Without a proper balance of the venous salt, natrium phosphate, the agent of peace and love, man is only fit for treason, stratagems, and spoils. These are your conflicts and traumas. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Da Vinci knew, yet how many Christians have this painting in their house and don't even understand its actual meaning? The disciple Thomas, Aries, standing at the head of the table. Why isn't Jesus seated at the head of the table? Because Aries is your head, the ram. Brahma or Brahma, the creator god of the Hindus, Abraham or Abraham of the Bible, Abracadabra open sesame. Ares is ruled by Mars, the god the Romans called Mars, and by no coincidence the Greeks called Ares, Ares. These are not mythologies or superstitions. These are very ancient scientific allegories for your body's biochemistry going in order around the zodiac and down the body from the head. Next we have Taurus or the disciple Thaddeus, your cerebellum and lower brain. And third in order, Judas, Gemini, the twins, your two lungs, two shoulders and two hands, 
who da Vinci cleverly coded here with two hands up. Next in order, the disciple Matthew, Cancer, the Crab, a symbol chosen because crabs only walk sideways, and the energy of Cancer actually overlaps with Gemini next to it, sideways over two signs, Cancer being the breast, stomach, spleen, and elastic tissues, while Gemini also being all fibers and tissues, elastic and connective. So da Vinci cleverly codes him leaning sideways like a crab over the disciple Simon or Leo, the heart and motor nerves in the body, to talk to the disciple Bartholomew or Virgo, the bowels and solar plexus. But does that look like a bloke named Bartholomew to you? This is my mother. Mrs. Exposition. How do you do? Oh, 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 my God, man, what have you done? That's not your mother, it's a man, baby! Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, no, why won't no, this no, wig come no, off? Once again, da Vinci has drawn a woman to show that that is clearly Virgo the Virgin Mother, not a historical disciple of Jesus. Thousands of years before the alleged birth of Jesus, in ancient astronomy, the first constellation of Virgo is Coma, the Virgin, sitting on a throne on the right-hand side of an infant boy she is nourishing, whose Hebrew name was Ihesu, or Jesus, with the signification Ieza, which in Greek is called Christos. Yeah, that guy. And on and on around the zodiac it goes, and down the human body to the feet and toes. That is your real Da Vinci Code, not this BS. But what is really interesting is when we get to the seventh sign in Disciple Peter, or Libra, the mineral stones our bodies are built on, which correspond with Reuben, the first son of Jacob and first tribe of Israel which means vision of the sun. Da Vinci has drawn Peter or Reuben pointing a finger upwards toward the ceiling. But why? Because on the ceiling he has purposely and cleverly encoded a six by six wide square pattern known by the ancient adepts as the magic square of the sun. He is showing you that the story of Jesus is an allegory for the Son of God and the zodiacal stars in the sky which are a celestial map of the Son of God in your body parts. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. When you take a 6 by 6 magic square of the sun and randomly fill in the numbers 1 through 36 in any order, all rows will add up to 111 and all six rows will add up to 666. Likewise, when you put the numbers in order from 1 through 36 and add them all up, they also equal 666. The popular casino game of roulette is based on this esoteric knowledge. Of course, in the old days, if you got caught with one of these diagrams or pendants, the church would burn you at the stake. So they started telling people 666 is the devil, when really it is just the magic square of the circle sun, the beast of revelation that rises in the east every morning out of the constellations in the night sky that represent man's body parts drawn out in the heavens, as well as man's body itself, the word of spirit made flesh. For it is the number of man, not the devil. All Roman crucifixions were done on capital T-shaped crosses, so you had to hold your own head up until your neck collapsed and you choked yourself out. And the church doesn't want you to know that their cross is really a symbol for the sun's oblong analema through the sky every year, where we get the infinity symbol, and why its literal glyph, the number 8, is the symbol of infinity because the sun does this forever and ever every year. There's nothing mystical about it. It's based on the sun's position at high noon each day throughout the year, divided by the four solstices and equinoxes that split the year in four, each 
with the sun rising and three zodiac signs between them. The biblical Jacob had 12 sons by four different women. So much for the church preaching monogamy. Those women are metaphors for the four solstices and equinoxes that divide the year, with three suns or constellations in each of them, totaling 12 children or zodiac signs. The zodiac is a metaphor for the human body. So there are Jacob's four wives and 12 children in your body. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? Long before the alleged birth of Christ, the ancients held the belief that the claustrum in our brain secretes a sacred oil once a month in our bodies that travels down our cerebral spinal cord to our sacrum that the ancients called the Christos oil or the Christ. Today, many still celebrate it as Santa Claus or claustrum, coming down the chimney with presents but have no idea where that tradition really comes from. The sacrum at the bottom of our spinal cord is where we get our religious words sacred from. And the reason that we celebrate Christmas and Santa Claustrum on December 25th is because the sun rises in the constellation Capricorn four days earlier on December 21st, the winter solstice, Jacob's fourth wife, and the constellation Capricorn is not only a metaphor for our digestion, bones, knees, and albumen, but the sacrum, Christmas, the Christos, or Christ oil, arriving down the spinal cord in our sacrum. That spinal cord has 33 vertebrae. Christ dies at age 33, an allegory. This Christos oil, or cerebrospinal fluid, allegedly sits down there in the tomb for three days and three nights while it is being purified, symbolized by Christ dying for three days and three nights in New Testament allegory and also allegorically by the sun as it enters Capricorn December 21st and stops rising any lower under the ecliptic at noon or any further south in the sky for three days and then is resurrected and starts to rise higher in the sky and head back north or up every day. Just as your oily cerebrospinal fluid, Christ or Christos oil, also known as Mercury, Quicksilver, the messenger of the gods with his caduceus, yes, that one, representing your head and nervous system, this oil climbs your 33 vertebrae, or Jacob's ladder, and meets your 12 cranial nerves, Jesus' 12 disciples in the New Testament allegory, or Jacob's 12 sons and tribes of Israel in Old Testament allegory, where it ignites the pineal gland, which is your resurrection. Don't you blaspheme in here! Don't you blaspheme in here! This is your biblical manna from heaven, which means man-making, the manna, or heavenly bread, forms man and also feeds him. The brain, or cerebrum, is the first and most important gland in the body. The essence it creates flows through all the other glands, but each gland consecutively differentiates its fluid. The allegorical Moses' people were not literally picking up some magical substance from the ground left by the morning dew and making actual magical bread out of it. That is an allegory. There is no morning dew in the hot, dry desert. Dew is an ancient term for brain substance. Cardinals are indigenous to the Americas, and these Italian Roman Catholic cardinals are not named after them. They are named after the cardinal points in the zodiac of the stars above, as well as the sun in the annual sky, which themselves are named after the cardinal points in the human body that square the circle, as well as the various sets of four mineral salts that biochemically and alchemically square themselves in the human body in this ancient science. Ironically, the Christian-hating free morons are just as equally in the dark about what squaring the circle actually means. 
They are told the square and the circle shapes are related to Euclid's 47th problem of squaring the circle, said to be the primary goal of free moronry. A worldwide secret society based on a 12th grade math equation? Give me a break. Squaring the circle does not in this case refer to a mathematical problem. It is a spiritual, metaphorical reference to man's instinctive quest to harmonize our physical and spiritual natures, which are one and the same. That's what they don't get. You can't forcibly harmonize two sides to the same coin. They are already in harmony by default. There it is, your body, the royal arch of Freemasonry. Aries, your brain down through Virgo, your bowels and solar plexus, a collection of two bundles of nerves that intertwine and pass each other at a central location in your abdomen. A metaphor for your head, spinal cord and torso, the tree of life, religion, mythology and astrology are metaphors for biology and if you don't know this you can read the astrophysiochemical Bible a million times until you are blue in the face and you will never understand what it is really talking about if you have a golf ball size consciousness when you read a book you'll have a golf ball size understanding when you look out, a golf ball size awareness, and when you wake up in the morning, a golf ball size wakefulness. But if you could expand that consciousness, then you read the book, more understanding. You look out, more awareness, and when you wake up, more wakefulness. It's consciousness. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us and it's right at the source and base of mind right at the source of thought which is why these guys don't want your mind to know about or think about any of this it's bad business for when the money collection basket comes around every Sunday to save your soul because God always seems to be short on cash oceans don't fill church cash coffers golf balls do but what does any of this blasphemy have to do with chicken pox, smallpox, measles, and mumps? When we know that the deficiency in the mineral cell salts of the blood causes the symptoms that medical ignorance has dignified and personified with Latin names of diseases that nobody knows the meaning of, we will know how to heal scientifically by the unalterable law of the chemistry of life. When we learn the cause of disease, then and not before will we prevent disease, not through quarantines, nor disinfectants, nor vaccines, nor boards of health, will man reach the long sought after planes of health. You don't call eggs and milk an omelet. And you don't call the chef, the stove, and the pan cooking the eggs and milk an omelet. You call the physical after effects of egg, milk, stove, pan, and chef cooking them an omelet. And like eggs and milk are not an omelet, chicken pox is not a thing or a disease caused by a never isolated or proven to exist theoretical varicella zoster virus. Varicella is just a personified Latin name that nobody knows the meaning of describing visible red bumps on the skin that comes from the Latin word variola meaning speckled or spotted this stink bug also has variola it's not a virus it's an adjective it's not a cause it's a biochemical after effect and this is not semantics why doesn't every single kid at the chicken pox party express chicken pox afterwards? Because chicken pox is not a contagious viral disease. It is simply a biochemically expressed physical after effect 
due solely to certain mineral tissue salt deficiencies in their bodies during their growth spurts and growth periods. When growing children need to eliminate old dead fibrin and tissue and make way for new, larger, stronger tissue. Some of them are late bloomers and aren't growing yet, so they don't need to eliminate dead fibrin tissue just yet. And some of them have mineral efficient healthy diets that can handle it normally if they do. But for those that do need to remove fibrin and are mineral deficient, do so through skin lesions we call chicken pox. And because modern doctors and the general public aren't given this knowledge, we keep running into this same ignorant dilemma. Doctors and scientists cannot transmit a person's measles or varicella chicken pox through contact, blood, or fluid to a person who doesn't have either. It's impossible. As Dr. Alfred F. Hess stated here regarding Dr. Sellard of John Hopkins' failed measles transmission experiments, it is remarkable that Dr. Sellards was unable to produce this highly infectious measles disease by means of the blood or the nasal secretion of infected individuals. Not long ago, however, I had a similar experience with varicella or chickenpox. Thus, we are confronted with two diseases, the two most alleged infectious diseases of the endemic diseases in this part of the world, which we are un able to transmit artificially from man to man. And yet sure as hell in real life, at least some of the kids at the chicken pox party do express their own chicken pox fibrin detox within a few days to weeks after the party. And the bogus contagious germ theory has us too stupid to understand there are other possible shared biological trigger phenomenon that easily explain this. But even among those who know this, we still start pointlessly arguing over which of those alternatives it may be. Who cares why the kid fell down the well? He's still down there either way. What are you going to do about it to help him out? You could learn that the Indian goddess Kali is not a stupid ancient superstition, but a biological feminine metaphor for time. Time as the changing aspect of nature that brings life or death. Why does she have eight arms like a spider? Because spiders spin webs or fiber or fibrin. And Kali, myrrh, Another name for the mineral potassium chloride or Gemini governs your body's fibers, fibrin, and tissues. For thick blood or embolus or embolism results from a lack of this Kali myrrh potassium chloride salt. For the spinning process stops, our threads thicken, tangle, and the parts feel enlarged, congested, and swollen. The thread or fiber takes up too much room. This is the true explanation for swellings, glandular enlargements, etc. Of course, as usual, our ignorant moron Frankenstein doctors aren't taught this. They see swollen glands and give our children a tonsillectomy, cutting out these swollen glands as if nature didn't put those tonsils there for a very good reason. The thick blood or embolus from a deficiency in potassium chloride causes the heart to work harder as more energy is required to circulate the thickened blood. Biochemistry states that Kali myrrh or potassium chloride is specific for children's diseases for it has to do with disturbances in the fibrin and is usually accompanied by exudations through the skin as in scarlet fever measles, chicken pox, swollen glands, throat irritation, diphtheria, tonsillitis, mumps, and to the degree in which iron, aka ferrum phosphate, the squaring of the Pisces salt, is deficient, fever will manifest. But what do we mean, the squaring of the Pisces salt? The squaring of the Pisces salt, which is iron, 
or its mineral name, ferrum phosphate, with the Gemini mineral salt potassium chloride is the Masonic squaring of the circle, or the Christian cardinal points we discussed earlier. But the basis of all the fibrin that makes up our body is calimur, or the mineral potassium chloride. But there are many different uses for fibrin in the body, so the many fibers are differentiated by the addition of other minerals or inorganic salts can bind with them. When these different inorganic non-living mineral salt building blocks are put together, combined with the protoplasm formed by our brain or cerebrum, they become organic or living material, which merely means put together as bricks with mortar. Not like a bunch of literal stonemasons or free morons, building a literal Solomon's temple out of brick and mortar that never actually existed, but Kali, the changing aspect of nature that brings things to life or death. There is definitely no living organic fibrin or tissue to be seen there. Other physical disease expressions coming from a lack of calimur or potassium chloride besides chickenpox and measles are mumps, smallpox, cancer, gonorrhea, syphilis, pneumonia, embolism, even acne, which is another teenage growth spurt fibrin removal disease, and children's diseases, among dozens of others. What is interesting to note is that out of the 12 mineral tissue salts that make up the body, only three of them are named after Cali, and all of them are the only three potassium-based minerals out of the 12. We have Gemini, Cali Myrrh, Chloride of Potassium, as we have discussed, which makes up among other things all fibers, fibrin, and tissues in the body. And then we have Aries, Cali Phos, or potassium phosphate, which makes up our spinal cord, sensory nerves, and cerebrum, which the protoplasm formed by our cerebrum turns inorganic non-living mineral combinations into living organic compounds. But the third one is Virgo, calisulf, or sulfate of potassium, which makes up the vital oils in your body, including your cerebral spinal fluid or Christos, Christ, or Christmas oil in your cerebrum. Another way to say this allegorically is that God, Gad, Aries, the cerebrum and spinal cord, potassium phosphate, connects to, mixes with, and biochemically impregnates the Virgin Mary, Virgo, sulfate of potassium, who happens to represent the exact same bowels and solar plexus area of the body where the spinal cord meets the sacrum and begets Jesus or Christ, the Christos oils of the body that give life. In New Testament allegory, Mary's husband is Joseph, the builder and carpenter, Gemini, the third potassium, chloride of potassium, that builds all fibers and tissues of the body. Joseph is not the real father of Christ because tissue does not make oil and oil does not need tissues to function. Tissues need oil to function and maintain their elasticity and flexibility. Joseph accepts Mary's son because Joseph needs Mary. Mary doesn't need Joseph. Mummy needs his mommy or mum, Mary oil. Of course, if you've never been taught this scientific biochemical allegory, the Bible sounds more like this. I listen, I listen to the religious stories. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. And I, I hope it is true. Right? For Joseph's sake. Right? I respect that guy's faith, the strength that guy's faith, right? What a mentally strong guy Joseph must have been, right? He's, he's in a relationship. They have never had sexual intercourse. 
But one day, his missus announces that she is pregnant. <laughs> and as far as I'm aware, Joseph calmly let her explain. Right? Not a... <laughs> he never raised his voice. He never, he never punched a wall. Because Joseph had faith. And Mary explained that the father of the child was an actual fact. God. And God had sent his only son to Mary for her to give birth to. So that his only son could go on to save the world from its sins. <laughs> However, I would just have liked if the Bible had elaborated ever so slightly on that entire episode. In particular, the chapters where Joseph the carpenter breaks his news to the rest of the building site. I read some of their paragraphs. Right, the carpenters are on their lunch break, just shooting the shit. And then Joseph tells them, so Mary's pregnant. They were probably high-fiving him. Fucking yes, Joe. Shaga, yes, Joe. <laughs> Don't give me the club, Joe. Fucking me, Joe. Yes, Joe. <laughs> but then Joe puts a dampener on the enthusiasm by saying, no, the baby is not actually mine. The fuck, Joe? The carpenters think they're going to have to go and fucking leather somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe would say, no, the baby uh, actually belongs to God. And God has sent his only son to Mary so that Mary can give birth to his only son and his only son can go on to save the world from its sins. And it was on that building site where the concept of atheism originated. <laughs> It was not ancient Greeks or academics or scientists or intellectuals or Richard Dawkins. It was workies who had the awakening by saying, Joe, she sounds like a fucking psycho. <laughs> because the bottom of the Aries cerebral spinal cord ends down here at the sacrum, which is a bone that is physically located down in the bowels and solar plexus area of the body, and Virgo is the allegory for that part of the body where the Christ oil is purified and the sacrum bone is located, but the actual physical sacrum bone itself is allegorized by Capricorn. So we get ignorant religious scholars and professors fighting over the birth date of Christ because they've been taught he's a real historical figure and not a biochemical allegory. It's like mistaking the city of Denver for the state of Colorado, just because it's located in Colorado. So yes, if you take the human body metaphor, the Christ oil is born in the sacrum or Capricorn, which starts December 21st. Capricorn means goat or goat fish, and its astrological symbol is the goat. Christ is born in a manger with the goats, Capricorn. And when you couple that with the human body drawn out as the sun rising in annual constellations, Christ is born there, December 25th, when the noon sun begins to rise again towards the north and ecliptic. Shown here at this red arrow, which is right below the kneecaps. By no coincidence, Capricorn also represents the knees in the human body. But then we have other Bible scholars and even occult literature like the Urantia book who claim Jesus was actually born at noon on August 21st or people like Dr. Mark Spitzbergen who goes through ridiculous extensive Bible quotes and research to come up with the idea that Jesus must have been born sometime between July and August. That is also true. The spinal cord and cerebrospinal fluid meets the sacrum in the bowels and solar plexus, represented by Virgo, which starts right there on August 23rd. It is no coincidence that Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Metaphysically, Mercury is a metaphor for mind. Physiologically, a metaphor for the cerebrospinal system, the nerves, 
chemically, it is quicksilver, an oily or fatty substance, the argentum vivum, or living philosophical silver, the brain and nerve essay or fluids. In other words, the brain or mind sends mercury, quicksilver, or the Christ, Christos oil, cerebral spinal fluid, down the spinal cord from the claustrum in the brain to Virgo, in the solar plexus where the sacrum is. That fluid is purified there and then sent back up the 33 vertebrae or Jacob's ladder to ignite the dormant gray matter in the brain and make man's thoughts resonate with a higher non-material spiritual energy rather than resonate with man's physical animal body needs and selfish desires or Satanism. <laughs>